Uh, yeah. Hubert Sumlin was, uh, was a, a mystical legend to me. I mean, he was a blues guitar player. He actually yeah. played with Howling, Howling Wolf. Wolf and with Muddy Waters, and it was just, it was, it was almost like a godlike figure to me. I couldn't believe I was sitting in the same room with him. Yeah. And he's telling stories about how he got into the blues, you know. Um, and he, he said, uh, he said oh, the blues was the devil's music. And uh, I, he said, he, basically, I'll, I'll say, he found a record uh, that was by the, the trash. And it had, it was like he said, it was a piece missing out of it with a piece like the size of a pizza. Uh, he put it on the record player and it went round and it was Howling Wolf and the Howling Wolf and whoa, 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 he said, and that was the moment I, I loved the devil's music. <laughs> yeah. And he's a great storyteller, and, and, oh, and that's, yeah. 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 But yeah. For, for a man to have played with those amazing legends was something else. Yeah. Yeah. And I said to him, I said, you were bending strings, weren't you, before Clapton, when well, Clapton was in diapers. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, yeah. like that, that was funny, you know, yeah. because yeah. he was, you know, yeah. he was oh, yeah. were bending yeah. strings. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. just about invented it, you know. Yeah. Cool. We hear the great blues guitar players, you know, we know about Muddy Waters and Elmore yeah. James and all these guys. But Hubert Sumlin, when you talk to blues musicians, they put him way, way at the top. Yeah. Well, you yeah, know? definitely, yeah. 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 So your blues, Mick, what about you? Blues and soul. And soul, soul as well, yeah. that's true, that's true, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what are your well, very similar, puts? really. I mean, more... Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry, more of that rock and roll stuff, but, you know, Chuck Berry played with all these uh, blues musicians anyway. That's in, right. In Chicago yeah. on the chess sessions. Mm -hmm. Otis Spann, Willie Dixon, you know, wrote all those great songs. Yeah. Well, it was all connected, wasn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. So it was, I didn't realize, well, I realized years ago, but it, was, it doesn't seem that long ago, that the way they got the groove on those Chuck Berry records was the band was playing a shuffle and he was playing fours on the guitar. So it had that rolling rhythm. And I remember when I was younger, the English bands could never get that feel on the, because they were playing it like white people, all dead right. straight. Da, right. da, 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 you know. <laughs> It's so wooden, it didn't swing at all. And I always knew there was something wrong, and I eventually figured it out. And I thought, yeah, oh, that's it. That's when the light came on. Yeah, so Chuck Berry and uh, also, you know, Albert King, mm -hmm. um, Otis Rush, um, what's the other guy? Freddie. Buddy Guy. Buddy Guy. Oh, Buddy guy yeah. yeah, all those, Freddie yeah. King. Sort of Chicago blues, primarily. Yeah, all, yeah. all from yeah. that period. That yeah. was my favorite mm -hmm. blues period. I'm yeah. not so much... A purist in, the, I mean, obviously Robert Johnson, great mm -hmm. songwriter. Yeah, yeah, I'm not really a purist, you know. No, I just, I like I, that I, I'm not really hugely knowledgeable about it. I just, mm -hmm. it's just something I like, you sure, know. And I, sure. I, I like yeah, that I'm electric looking. period when Muddy yeah, Waters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He came to England, Muddy Waters, with a with his Fender Telecaster, and all these English people in the audience didn't like it. They couldn't. They were like purists, you know. Yeah. How dare you yeah. play an electric guitar? Right, right. right. And poor old <laughs> Muddy Waters was like. Well, I just thought I was trying something different, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then the next time he came, he didn't bring his electric guitar. Of course, the audience wanted to know, where's the electric guitar? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Typical English, you can't please them, you know. <laughs> yeah. Just so fickle. And Simon? Um, well, all of the above, you know, what Paul and Mick were saying, uh, the blues. Uh, I loved uh, Otis, Otis Redding, Wilson oh, Pickett, yeah. Aretha. Soul, really. Um, Al Jackson was your Al Jackson was my number one governor in drums. Al Jackson Jr., who was the drummer with uh, the Stax house That's band. Right. Tamala, all the, the Tamala Motown drummers. Oh, yeah. And big band jazz. I, I, I started watching, but the first thing I ever saw on TV was a thing called All That Jazz, and it featured big bands, swing bands. Mm. And I was mesmerized by primarily the, the drummer. Um, yeah. And yeah. then through the Beatles and the Stones, I got into, you know, black music, soul and blues. If it hadn't been for the Beatles and the Stones, I think the cause of black music would have been many more years in coming. Yeah. Thanks to them, you know. Well, their first uh, album was all yeah. covers, wasn't the it? The Marvelettes. Yeah. And the Stones. Mr. Yeah. Postman. Yeah. Yeah. They got so, access and to the band, records. I love the band. Lee Von Helm was yeah. a great influence on me. Sure. And Ringo. Yeah. Ringo, yeah. don't forget Ringo. Oh, no.